Module 2. Make social change happen towards social practice. After the completion of the module the learner will be able to For a more equitable society, social practice, our weapon to change the world. Introduction A social practice is a recurring pattern of behavior, values, beliefs, and interactions that a group of people engage in and consider as part of their cultural or societal norms. It encompasses the ways in which people live their daily lives, work, play, and interact with each other in a particular community or society. Social practices can include cultural traditions, economic systems, religious beliefs, political systems, and other forms of shared behavior and understanding. This phenomenon is the way in which human interactions, relationships, Patterns of behavior and cultural norms evolve over time and transform cultural and social institutions, concepts and norms, and inevitably have a long-term impact on society. Social change is the process of transforming the structures, attitudes and values of society in order to promote equity and equality for all members of society. It can include changes in public policy, laws and social norms, as well as changes in individual attitudes and behaviors. Social change can be driven by many factors, such as social inequalities, discrimination, environmental problems and injustices. Social change can occur at different levels, ranging from individual changes to public policy changes. It can be driven by awareness campaigns, social movements, advocacy, and grassroots actions. It can be a slow and difficult process, but it can have a profound and lasting impact on society. It can help create a more just and equitable society for all community members and improve the quality of life for all. What can be changed through social practice? Social issues, poverty, inequality, etc. Social issues such as poverty and inequality can be addressed and changed through the transformation of social practices. This can involve changes at the individual, community, and systemic levels. Individual level. Encouraging individuals to adopt more equitable and inclusive behaviors and attitudes, such as volunteering, supporting local businesses, and advocating for fair policies. Community level. Building strong, supportive communities that work together to address social issues through collective action, such as community-led initiatives, advocacy groups, and local government initiatives. Systemic level. Addressing the root causes of social issues through systemic changes, such as policy reform, advocacy for systemic change, and changes in the way that resources are distributed and used. Social practices are shaped by cultural, economic, 
political, and other systemic factors, so addressing these underlying issues is crucial for sustainable change. Social change is a slow and ongoing process, it requires the commitment of individuals, communities, and systems to work together towards a common goal. Political and environmental issues Political and environmental issues can be changed through social practice by promoting the transformation of values, attitudes, and behaviors within society. This can involve several strategies, including raising awareness, encouraging public discourse and educating the public about the importance of political and environmental issues, and the impact they have on people's lives. Activism and advocacy, encouraging individuals to take action, either by participating in protest movements, supporting advocacy groups, or by running for political office. Voter engagement, encouraging individuals to vote, and participate in the political process. This includes educating people about the political process and their rights and responsibilities as citizens. Creating alternative models, encouraging experimentation with new and alternative models of political and environmental governance, such as community-led initiatives, cooperatives, and local sustainability initiatives. Systemic change. Advocating for systemic change through policy reform, changes to the political and economic systems, and other large-scale changes that promote environmental sustainability and social justice. Identity and cultural diversity issues. Identity and cultural diversity issues can be changed through social practice by promoting the transformation of values, attitudes, and behaviors within society towards greater respect, inclusion, and understanding of different cultures and identities. This can involve several strategies, including education and awareness, providing education and awareness raising initiatives that promote the understanding of different cultures and identities, and the importance of cultural diversity and inclusivity. Encouraging intercultural dialogue, encouraging open and respectful dialogue between people from different cultures, and creating spaces for these conversations to take place. Media representation, encouraging fair and respectful representation of different cultures and identities in media and popular culture, and promoting positive role models from diverse communities. Challenging stereotypes, challenging negative stereotypes and promoting positive images of different cultures and identities. Policy reform. Advocating for policy reform and changes in laws and regulations that promote cultural diversity and inclusivity, and protect the rights of minority and marginalized communities. Supporting community-led initiatives. Supporting community-led initiatives and grassroots organizations that promote cultural diversity and inclusivity, and work to address specific issues faced by minority communities. How to make social change through social practice. Making social change through social practice requires a multifaceted approach that involves the transformation of values, attitudes, and behaviors within society. Here are some steps that can be taken to promote social change through social practice. Identify the issue. The first step is to identify the social issue that you want to address and understand the root causes of the problem. Build a coalition. To make social change, it's important to build a coalition of individuals and organizations that share your goals and are committed to working together to bring about change. Raise awareness. Raising awareness about the issue and encouraging public discourse is an important step in promoting social change. This can include education and awareness raising initiatives, media campaigns, and community-led events. Engage in activism and advocacy. Encourage individuals to take action by participating in protest movements, supporting advocacy groups, or running for political office. Promote alternative models. Encourage experimentation with new and alternative models of social practice that promote the values and behaviors that you want to see in society. Work for systemic change. Work to address the root causes of the issue through systemic changes, such as policy reform, 
changes to the political and economic systems, and other large-scale changes that promote the values and behaviors that you want to see in society. Evaluate and refine your approach. Continuously evaluate your approach and make changes as necessary to promote more effective and sustainable social change. Examples of social practice that have led to social change. Civil Rights Movement. The African American community's fight for equal rights and freedoms through nonviolent protests and civil disobedience. Women's Suffrage. The women's movement that aimed to secure the right to vote for women. LGBTQ Rights Movement. The movement advocating for the rights of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people, including the fight for marriage equality. Environmental Activism. The movement advocating for greater protection of the environment and addressing issues such as climate change, pollution, and deforestation. Labor Rights Movement. The movement advocating for fair treatment and working conditions for workers, including the fight for minimum wage laws and unionization. Disability Rights Movement. The movement advocating for the rights and inclusion of people with disabilities, including accessibility and anti-discrimination laws. Anti-war and peace activism. The movement advocating for peaceful resolution of conflicts and opposing war and military interventions. Education reform. The movement advocating for equal access to quality education, including the fight for desegregation and increased funding for schools. The role of youth workers in social change. Youth workers play an important role in social change by helping young people develop their full potential and providing opportunities for them to engage in their communities. They often work with at-risk or marginalized youth, providing them with support and opportunities to have a voice and be agents of change in their communities. Youth workers may work in many settings, such as schools, recreation centers, shelters and youth centers. They may also work with street-involved youth or youth from disadvantaged communities. The role of youth workers is to support young people in their personal development and to provide them with opportunities to learn, grow and become involved in their community. They can help young people develop self-confidence, learn new skills and engage in volunteer or community activities. In working with youth, youth workers can also help raise awareness of social issues and engage youth in actions for social change. They can help youth understand complex social issues and engage in actions to promote social change. Ultimately, the role of youth workers is to support young people in their personal development and to help them become agents of change in their communities. They play an important role in social change by helping young people engage in actions to create a more just and equitable society for all. In order to apprehend how a youth worker can make social change happen, it is fundamental to make a diagnosis and to discuss. Why there is still a need for social workers nowadays. There are several reasons why we still need youth workers today. First, youth continue to face many challenges and difficulties, such as anxiety, depression, behavioral problems, and pressures related to school and relationships. Youth workers can help youth navigate these challenges and find ways to overcome them. In addition, many young people may need additional support to succeed in life, whether in terms of career or personal development. Youth workers can provide development and training opportunities to help young people achieve their goals. 
Finally, youth workers can help young people connect with their community and become active and responsible citizens. They can also provide volunteer and community service opportunities to strengthen young people's sense of social responsibility and help build stronger, more inclusive communities. In summary, youth workers are still needed today because they provide support, developmental opportunities, and community connections to help young people succeed and become happy, fulfilled adults. What are the struggles that youth workers encounter? Youth workers can face many challenges and problems in the course of their work. Here are some examples of common problems youth workers face. Lack of time and resources. Youth workers may have heavy workloads and limited budgets, which can make it difficult to implement effective programs and services. Burnout. Youth support work can be emotionally taxing and it is important that youth workers take care of their personal well-being to avoid burnout. Difficulty building trust with youth. Youth workers often have to work with youth who have specific needs or challenges, and it can be difficult to build trust with them. Inequality and discrimination. Youth workers may face inequalities and discrimination based on their gender, race, sexual orientation, or gender identity, which can make it difficult to do their work. Lack of recognition and support. Youth support work can be undervalued and undervalued, which can lead to a lack of recognition and support for youth workers. It is important that youth workers receive the support and resources they need to face these challenges and to carry out their work effectively and fulfillingly. Is it a generational problem? There may be generational differences that can influence the relationship between a youth worker and a recipient. For example, differences in life experiences, values, and perspectives can cause tension or misunderstanding. However, it is important to note that generational differences are not necessarily a barrier to building a relationship of trust and mutual respect. It is important that youth workers are aware of generational differences and strive to understand the views and needs of their beneficiaries. They can also strive to create a space for open and respectful dialogue where differences can be addressed in a constructive way. Generational differences can be a challenge for the relationship between youth workers and their clients, but they are not necessarily insurmountable. By working consciously and creating a space for open dialogue, it is possible to build strong and respectful relationships despite generational differences. What is missing between the youth and the educators? There are several elements that can be important in building a relationship of trust and mutual respect between a youth worker and his or her client. Open and respectful communication. It is important for youth workers to listen carefully to the needs and concerns of youth and to be open to their views. Respect for youth autonomy and independence. Youth workers should respect the autonomy and independence of youth and give them the space and tools to make their own decisions and learn for themselves. Support and encouragement. Youth workers should support and encourage young people in their plans and ambitions, while respecting their limits and looking out for their well-being. Confidentiality and privacy. Youth workers should respect the privacy and confidentiality of young people and ensure that information shared is not disclosed to others without their consent. In order to establish a relationship of trust and mutual respect between a youth worker and their client, it is important to have open and respectful communication, to respect the autonomy and independence of youth, to offer support and encouragement, and to respect their privacy and confidentiality.
The responsibilities of youth workers regarding social practice. A social worker's responsibilities in social change depend on their specific role and work context. In general, social workers may be responsible for identifying social problems and needs of individuals and communities and developing programs and services to address them. Working with individuals, families and communities to support them and help them achieve their goals. Assess and develop individualized treatment plans for individuals and families. Work with other professionals and organizations to provide quality services to individuals and communities. Implement social change programs and services to improve the living conditions of individuals and communities. Participate in research and analysis of public policy to assess its impact on individuals and communities. Promote equity and social inclusion and combat discrimination and inequality. In summary, social workers have an important role to play in identifying and solving social problems, supporting individuals and communities, developing social change programs and services, and promoting equity and social inclusion. How social art is linked to social change Social art is linked to social change because it has the power to inspire and mobilize people to take action towards a better society. Art can be a form of communication that transcends language and cultural barriers, and it can be used to express ideas, raise awareness, and spark discussion about important social issues. Through its ability to engage emotions, Social art can also bring attention to neglected or marginalized communities, and challenge dominant power structures and norms. Additionally, social art can serve as a means of empowerment, giving voice and agency to those whose experiences and perspectives are often not represented or heard. By connecting people with common values and causes, social art can foster a sense of community and solidarity, and help build movements for positive change. Whether through activism, protest, or other forms of artistic expression, social art has the potential to drive lasting, meaningful change in society. Interviews of two social workers using art with their beneficiaries. Aurora works in the association ABCDANSE located in Bastia, Corsica, France, with people in precarious situations or suffering from disabilities. Does it make sense to you to use an artistic practice to be able to dialogue with its beneficiaries? Yes, absolutely, it makes sense to use an artistic practice to dialogue with its beneficiaries. Artistic practices can often be used as a means of communication, expression, and connection. Through art, beneficiaries may be able to express themselves in ways they may not be able to through other means. Can you describe a concrete example of using dance, or other arts, sports practice, with one of your beneficiaries? Suppose there is an individual, let's call her Sarah who struggles with anxiety and low self-esteem. A therapist might suggest incorporating dance as a therapeutic tool to help her manage her emotions and build confidence. I also lead adapted Zumba class with people with disabilities and it really helped them become more aware of their bodies and emotions. What do you think are the main challenges that grantees face when expressing themselves through dance? 
The degree of tiredness specific to each person and learn to let go within a group without fearing the gaze of others. Can you describe the main benefits you've seen in grantees using dance as a means of expression? Improvement of self-esteem, self-confidence and self-image. How do you incorporate dance into your follow-up with your beneficiaries? In the form of adapted dance workshops, adapted Zumba, adapted Zen Ball, etc. How do you assess the impact of using dance on beneficiaries' progress? Health Perception Questionnaire Self-assessment, physical ability tests, at time zero and time t, satisfaction questionnaires, formal, team meeting, and informal verbal exchanges with beneficiaries, members of the multidisciplinary team and or beneficiaries' family members, testimonies. How do you deal with the potential reluctance of clients to participate in group dance activities? In this case, I suggest that they observe the session. This is a first approach that may be necessary for some beneficiaries, with or without the accompaniment of their referent. How do you work with dance teachers to tailor sessions to the needs of your clients? To date, I do not work with state-certified dance teachers. I am a sports animator and my background makes me knowledgeable and skilled in dance. Classical, jazz, contemporary, modern jazz, hip hop, etc. I work in collaboration with another person who also animates dance workshops. We regularly hold team meetings in order to adapt the sessions to the expectations and needs of the people. How do you manage the participation of grantees in potential public performances or performances? The public performances are based solely on the motivation and willingness of the individual. There is no obligation to participate. People who wish to participate in a public performance are free to commit to it. How do you plan to continue using dance in your professional practice in the future? In the same way as for the last 10 years, with the benefit of the years of experience and the additional and complementary trainings that I passed, in particular the one in sport health. I believe that in this profession, continuous training is recommended. How long have you been using street art in your professional practice? We have been using street art in our professional practices since 2015. Can you describe a concrete example of using street art with one of your beneficiaries? We realized within the framework of our collective actions of the graphs within the political districts of the city of Bastia. Over several days, after choosing a building in the city, in partnership with a street artist, we created three frescoes on the theme of intergenerationality. In your opinion, what are the main difficulties faced by beneficiaries when expressing themselves through street art? The main difficulties are the fear of others' gaze, but also the difficulties to express themselves in front of their peers. Finally, the ability to draw with tools that they do not necessarily master at the base, spray paint, chalk, unusual wall support to draw. Can you describe the main benefits you've seen in grantees using street art as a means of expression? The users feel valued by this means of expression because they leave a trace of themselves in their neighborhood. The realization and the finality of the project allow them to be identified in their environment as people having realized something positive for the community.
Finally, street art allows them to express themselves without value judgment while respecting a predefined framework. How do you integrate street art into your support plan with beneficiaries? Street art is a support of educational accompaniment allowing to put in situation, to observe and to develop the publics which we accompany. How do you evaluate the impact of the use of street art on the evolution of the beneficiaries? We can see an evolution in behavior within a group but also in terms of ability to respect a framework and rules. Moreover, this allows the user to open up to his environment and his place in society. How do you work with local authorities and organizations to manage street art projects with beneficiaries? We work in collaboration with local authorities, city policy, but also with social landlords who finance us and make available to us the wall surfaces that we use to create the graphs. Do you have any success stories or projects that have had a significant impact among beneficiaries? Because of our mission of child protection and specialized prevention, we are in daily contact with young people who are not registered in anything. These projects often allow them to become aware of their social and sometimes artistic and creative potential. This allows some of them to unblock their social and professional development. How do you deal with potential conflicts that may arise with building owners or neighborhood associations regarding street art projects? Upstream, we work with the associative and institutional partners as well as the inhabitants of the territory where we realize the fresco in order to involve them and thus create a form of cohesion around the project. How do you plan to continue using street art in your professional practice in the future? We plan to continue to use street art as a support to the educational relationship with the public we accompany. We also plan to continue to use it as a social vector that allows us to maintain the partnership relationship with the different associative and institutional actors of the territory. Tools and best practices for social workers. Examples of good practices of social art that can be put into practice in order to help social workers to have tools to set up lively and playful workshops. Slam Workshop A slam, spoken word or performed poetry, workshop generally proceeds as follows. It is important to show all the benefits. It can improve oral and written expression, creativity and self-confidence. The workshop leader welcomes participants and introduces the theme and objectives of the workshop. The facilitator may also introduce the basic rules of SLAM, such as respect for each other's expression and the prohibition of discriminatory or harassing behavior. The facilitator can begin with a slam demonstration or performance to give participants an idea of what to expect. Participants are invited to write their own slam poem or script on the theme of the workshop. They can work alone or in small groups. Once participants have written their piece, they have the opportunity to rehearse it aloud in front of the group. The facilitator can give advice and feedback on the performance and on how to present the script. The workshop continues with discussions and exchanges about the different slam scripts and performances. Participants can give feedback and share their impressions of each other's performances. The workshop concludes with a review of what was discussed and an evaluation of the workshop by the participants. The facilitator can also suggest avenues of work for future sessions. Visual Art Workshop Here are some general steps to consider when planning a visual art workshop.
Determine the type of visual art you want to focus on. This could include painting, drawing, printmaking, sculpture, or any other medium you want to explore. Decide on a theme or topic for the workshop. This could be a specific art style, technique, or subject matter. Set a date, time, and location for the workshop. Make sure the location is suitable for the type of art you'll be doing, and that it's easily accessible for attendees. Determine the length of the workshop. Depending on the complexity of the art medium and the level of experience of the attendees, you may need anywhere from a few hours to multiple days. Create a list of required materials for the workshop. This could include paints, brushes, canvas, paper, clay, or any other materials needed for the chosen art medium. Set a price for the workshop. Consider the cost of materials, the length of the workshop, and your time and expertise when deciding on a price. Promote the workshop through social media, word of mouth, and any other relevant channels. Make sure to clearly communicate the date, time, location, theme, and cost of the workshop. On the day of the workshop, make sure you have all the materials set up and ready to go. Provide clear instructions and guidance for attendees, and be available to answer any questions or offer support as needed. After the workshop, consider gathering feedback from attendees to improve future workshops. You may also want to share photos or videos of the artwork created during the workshop on social media or your website. Remember to have fun and be creative with your workshop planning. Good luck! Dance Workshop If you are a youth worker planning to use dance in a workshop, here are some guidelines to consider. Safety first. As a youth worker, you have a responsibility to create a safe environment for the participants. Make sure that the dance space is free of hazards, such as objects that can be tripped over. If participants will be dancing in pairs or groups, ensure that they understand how to engage in physical contact safely and respectfully. Plan your content. Depending on the goals of your workshop, you may need to plan a sequence of dance steps or a specific choreography. Make sure that the dance content is age-appropriate and aligns with the goals of the workshop. Communicate with participants. Before starting the dance, communicate with participants about the purpose of the workshop, and provide them with clear instructions. Make sure that everyone understands the sequence of steps, and is aware of any safety considerations. Encourage creativity. Dance is a creative art form, and participants should be encouraged to express themselves through movement. Allow participants to add their own style or interpretation to the dance sequence, and encourage them to collaborate with others. Provide feedback. As the youth worker leading the workshop, it's important to provide constructive feedback to participants. This could include positive feedback on what they are doing well, as well as suggestions for areas they could improve upon. Be sure to frame your feedback in a supportive and encouraging way. Provide opportunities for reflection. After the workshop, provide participants with an opportunity to reflect on their experience. This could include a group discussion, a written reflection, or an opportunity to share their thoughts or feelings about the dance. By following these guidelines, you can create a safe and engaging dance workshop for youth that helps them explore their creativity and express themselves through movement. Conceptual Art and Public Art Workshop Guidelines for a youth worker that uses conceptual art and public art in a workshop. Plan ahead. Conceptual and public art can be complex and nuanced, so it's important to plan your workshop ahead of time. Consider the goals of the workshop, the time available, and the resources you will need. Choose your topic carefully. Conceptual and public art can cover a wide range of topics and themes, so choose a topic that is relevant and engaging for the youth you will be working with. You could focus on issues related to the local community, environmental issues, or social justice themes, for example. Provide context. 
Conceptual art and public art often involve complex ideas and themes. Make sure to provide context and background information to help participants understand the work they will be creating. Encourage collaboration. Conceptual and public art often involve collaboration and community engagement. Encourage participants to work together and consider ways to involve the broader community in their art. Consider your location. Public art is often created for specific locations or contexts. Consider the location of the workshop and how it might influence the work that participants create. You may want to take participants on a tour of the surrounding area to inspire their work. Provide feedback. As the youth worker leading the workshop, it's important to provide constructive feedback to participants. This could include positive feedback on what they are doing well, as well as suggestions for areas they could improve upon. Be sure to frame your feedback in a supportive and encouraging way. Document the process and the final work. Conceptual and public art often involve a process of creation that is just as important as the final product. Consider documenting the process through photos, videos, or written reflections. Make sure to document the final work as well, and consider sharing it with the broader community. By following these guidelines, you can create a workshop that helps youth explore and create their own conceptual and public art, while also engaging with the broader community and relevant social issues. So much for the different methods of organizing workshops around social art. While using social art it is possible to engage in social practice in order to achieve positive, inclusive social change, where everyone can flourish by having the opportunity to express their emotions, their desires and claim what is due to everyone. 